You are watching Park TV. Welcome to Monadnock Tonight with your host, Steve Jackson. Coming to you live from the studios of the Park Theater in downtown Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Now sit back, relax, and here's Steve. Well, 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 well. Good to see everybody, uh, and welcome to the show. Uh, it uh, welcome to Park Theater, uh, and welcome to the Park Theater and Park TV's Monadnock tonight. It is Thursday, number fifth. Uh, 2020. It's just about 5 p.m. here on the East Coast, and this is show number 55. Five, five. And yes, I am uh, Steve Jackson. I'm the CEO of the Park Theater and your weekly host for the program. And uh, as always, we're very glad that you join us, whether you're with us live or if you're watching us on tape, uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, today, I uh, I am going to present, uh, today's show is, uh, is me, myself, and I, plus a very special guest. And the guest, of course, is a filmmaker who's not with us any longer, uh, but we're going to present one of his short films uh, and a very special film that uh, it was made 100 years ago. Um, but first, um, a few notes on what's going on at the Park Theater. Uh, I know a lot of people are asking what, what's happening. We haven't been inside yet. What do you got going on in there? How much is done? Well, we're getting closer and closer and, uh, and really using to as much to our benefit as we can. We certainly had hoped to be open uh, over the summer, uh, but that was, uh, we, our schedule had to change as many, uh, communal spaces and theaters uh, had to change their, their schedule of, of what they're doing and, uh, and, and try, to, try to do something productive if they're not partially opening. And that's uh, kind of what we're, we've been doing ourselves. Uh, but we're using this period of time to put the finishing touches on the park theater. Uh, inside, it's all painted, the bathrooms are in, the uh, heating and cooling system are in, the absolutely wonderful, you won't believe how comfortable, 330 seats in the William David Epps, our main auditorium, have been installed. And, uh, and now uh, we're proceeding with kind of just those finishing things. Uh, obviously, we need a little bit of furniture in our lobbies and things like that. And we're also getting our plans ready to install uh, our state-of-the-art movie projector system, our Dolby sound system that will go with that, assisted listening systems for those who need a little bit of extra help in either uh, listening or watching closed captions. Um, and uh, all the other things, concession equipment, uh, theatrical lights and theatrical rigging for our live shows. Uh, it's all very, very exciting, and uh, and we we cannot wait uh, to be able to show it all to you and uh, and show it to you with the wonderful entertainment that we're going to put through uh, the park theater, whether it be live and featuring local acts or it's live and featuring performers uh, with names that you know from that tour the country. Um, and, uh, and, and, and then of course the, the bread and butter of the original park theater movies, and we'll be showing new movies. We'll be showing classic movies, independent movies. If you were, a, uh, a frequent guest at our, uh, interim river street theater, uh, here on river street, uh, next to our office. Um, and you saw those type of films that are great independent films uh documentaries and uh classics as well as great animation uh and short films um and of course the uh royal shakespeare out of stratford upon avon uh the royal opera the royal ballet shows from the west end musicals from the west end uh all in hd 
we'll be we'll be uh, moving those all over to our two auditoriums and with sound that I will tell you and and projection that uh, is going to be very special and uh, unique in our region. And we are putting a lot of attention on uh, the quality of of how we're going to present films to you. And, uh, and that's kind of an homage to uh, Romolo Vanni, uh, who uh, started the Park Theater uh, to, uh, to make sure that film is, uh, is extra special for the guests of the Park Theater. So that's, as I say now, uh, and of course, when we open, we, we wanna make sure that we have a safe environment for our, our guests, our, our staff, and certainly the performers when we're doing live shows. So we're, uh, all we can say for you is to stay tuned and we will, uh, you know, kind of uh, in how, in keeping with a lot of other theaters in the, in the region, you know, hopefully as soon as we can, uh, we will. And, uh, but in the meantime, as I say, we're putting the finishing touches on there. So that's what's going on uh, with the theater itself. Uh, now we have a new free park Pix Flix movie starts tomorrow uh, on Friday, and the film is uh, quite an interesting thriller from 1965 and uh, called Mirage, and it is um, stars, right, you can see on the top there, Gregory Peck and Diane Baker. It's about a man who has amnesia, and uh, that's always a good theme in a, in a thriller film. Uh, it happens after a blackout, and uh, also stars, uh, you see some of those names down there, uh, Kevin McCarthy, uh, Jack, uh, well, Walter Matthau, Leif Erickson, Walter Abel, George Kennedy. That's a great list of people in a film like this. And Jack Weston, and I mentioned Jack Weston separately, because Jack Weston uh, was an alumnus of the Peterborough Players and was an actor in summer theater uh, at the Players during the 1950s. So, and you can see his picture is up in the hallways of the lobby of one of the shows, uh, one or two of the shows that, uh, that, he, uh, that he did uh, while he was there at the, uh, at the Players. So that will be up, be on the lookout for that. Um, uh tomorrow it'll go live tomorrow uh go to the parktheater.org and in the top right just pick uh park picks flicks in the top right area and you'll find it or just watch uh facebook tomorrow uh we'll have a posting uh that you can click the link that will take you directly to the free film uh free universal video film online and so um, what else is going on? Uh, plus, in honor of Veterans Day next week, we will present a double feature of two exceptional World War II themed films that are free to watch online. Uh, normally, as we've done, as the Park Theater has done for so many years, we would show a Veterans Day film uh, at the Jaffrey Women's Club. Uh, and of course this year, we were hoping by this time that we would show you one at the new theater, uh, but sadly we cannot. But still, we have uh, some great films to show you online in the comfort of your home. Uh, the first film is Stalag 17 uh, from 1953 with William Holden and um, Otto Preminger, uh, and Mission Impossible, if you're a fan of the original show, Peter Graves, uh, a great film, award-winning film, uh, an incredible cast of character actors that you may not know their names, but you uh, certainly know their faces are in it. And, and of course, this was the film that uh, uh, a, a takeoff was made in the 1960s with Hogan's Heroes, Stalag 13. Um, but Let's, uh, to, if you don't know the film, oh boy, you should see it, let me tell you. Uh, if you do, do know the film, it's always worth a second look. Uh, and to give you a taste of it, here is the trailer for Stalag 17.
was about a week before Christmas in 44, and two of our guys were just getting set to blow the place. Nobody has ever escaped from Starak 17. Come on, Trader Hart. Let's hear it. 45 cigarettes. Price has gone up. Sergeant J.J. Septon. Every Saturday and Sunday, he'd put on horse races. And they're off and running at Stalag 17. Real Bonanza, the observatory. Just what makes you and them so buddy buddy? It takes a little trading with the enemy to get me some food or a better mattress. It's okay by Septon. Maybe there's somebody in our barracks tipping them off, like one of us. What are you looking at me for? Uh, I think that's a pretty good teaser uh, for what you're in store for. And you, and if you saw some of those faces, you know, you know a lot of those actors that you've seen before. But it is really, it's a remarkable film. Incredible performance by William Holden. Uh, and when he does show his face, Otto Preminger, uh, quite, quite uh, a formidable uh, character he plays as a German officer commandant. Uh, now, but I said it's a double, it's a double feature. Um, so the next uh, film, it was made much more recently, still a while ago now, it's hard to believe, 1998 is a while ago. Uh, but this is a film called When Trumpets Fade. And it's from, uh, as I say, 1998, it stars Ron Eldard, Frank, we uh, Frank Whaley, and Bobby Cannavale. And it's based on true events, uh, Eldard, uh, Ron Eldard plays the sole survivor of his platoon during the fa famous uh, German battle of the Hürtgen Forest. So let's take a look at the trailer for When Trumpets Fade. He was a reluctant soldier. If I can help you in any way without endangering my own life, I won't hesitate. But I'm not taking a bullet for anybody. That's not good enough. That's as good as it gets. A reluctant leader. Congratulations, Private. You're a sergeant. I am absolutely the wrong man. You managed to stay alive for a week. That's something the rest of your platoon couldn't do. Call me crazy, but from where I'm standing, that makes you qualified for the job. But in the heat of battle, he became a reluctant hero. You're gonna make it! You can do this. Even when the glory of war fades into the horror of battle, an ordinary man can become a hero. We don't know, Bobby. We don't know. HBO Home Video presents an epic true story when trumpets fade. What's your name? Warren. Welcome to Death Factory, Warren. From director John Irvin of Hamburger Hill and the Dogs of War comes the movie the Washington Post called First Class. Powerful, suspenseful, and shattering. Masterful, said Variety. A war picture that earns its stripes, declared People Weekly. So, uh, I hope you uh, take a chance. Now, again, they start on Veterans Day, and we'll keep them up after that, but we're going to debut them uh, the morning of uh, next Wednesday, November 11th. So you've got two great films to choose from uh, or watch them both. Why not? Um, so, and uh, a special day uh, and to thank the men and women who have served uh, and done done such remarkable service for the United States and to put their lives on the line. We, we always thank them, but especially on this, this focused day to remember them, uh, all veterans. So uh, we hope you enjoy these two films. Today, uh, I'm gonna to introduce you to our featured um, movie maker of yesteryear uh, for today. 
and he is, let's put up a picture of him. And I think many in our audience will know him. Uh, he didn't do that much work in, in, in sound movies, but in the silent movies, he was king. Uh, and his name is Buster Keaton. And I'll give you a little bit of Buster's background. Um, and, you know, Charlie Chaplin will always be at the top of the silent film era in terms of, certainly in terms of comedy. Uh, but there are other greats as well. And, and certainly Buster Keaton was one of them. And he was renowned for absolutely death-defying stunt work that he did all himself. And you're looking at one of his uh, copyrighted deadpan facial expressions, but his acting, his directing, he directed most of almost all the films he was in, as well as would write them. And many say that he revolutionized that new next era of uh, silent film, starting with Sherlock Jr. in with 1924. Then he had followed that up uh, with a general in 1926 and the cameraman in 1928. He was born in Pika, Kansas in 1895. And he comes from a vaudeville life. He, is, uh, he joined his vaudeville parents to, uh, on stage at the age of three. Uh, and continued to perform throughout his childhood before serving in the U.S. Army during the First World War. And on his return, he was able to get to Hollywood and forge a relationship with uh, already a superstar uh, of silent films, Fatty Arbuckle, uh, making his acting debut in the comedian's uh, silent film, The Butcher's Boy, and co-starring with him in over a dozen shorts. Uh, his career was long and exceptional, uh, and he did, in the 50s, he did uh, commercials for many products, uh, most times uh, without saying a word, because that was what he was known for, um, did beer commercials. Um, and then his swan song performance was in 1965-66 in one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> and still is one of the funniest movies, is he played the next door neighbor, Erroneous, in the ancient Roman farce, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. And just before it was released, sadly, he passed away at a relatively young age of lung cancer at 70 years of age. But his legacy luckily lives on and his films, uh, he's been rediscovered again and again. And his films are be, have been preserved and some of them are in pristine shape. This one is okay uh, that I'm gonna show you today. It's not bad, uh, but there are some that look like they were shot yesterday and, uh, that, and they continue uh, various groups out of Hollywood and, and uh, and the Library of Congress to preserve his work uh, because it, it's so notable. And, and, and the stunts that he did um, have been duplicated uh, and, <laughs> and sometimes duplicated with CGI computer graphics, but um, many, many times over and you'll notice that. But what I'm gonna be showing you today is silent. It has a music track on it, but it's a 17 minute short that debuted on December 20th 1920, 100 years ago next month. And this was known as a two-reeler because it was a relatively short film, it's uh, 17 minutes, and, and it was called Neighbors. And uh, it was written and directed by Buster along with his longtime collaborator, uh, collaborator uh, Eddie Klein. And again, lesser known than most of his big films, but Neighbors certainly ranks at the top of his films as well as all silent comedy films. The story, it's a tenement neighborhood version of Romeo and Juliet. Actress uh, Virginia Fox plays Buster 
Buster's character, the boys, Gal. Buster's real father, Joe uh, Keaton, plays his father in the film. And Eddie Klein, the uh, director, co-director and writer of the film, uh, plays the cop. What you're going to see are incredible stunts, funniest slapstick, memorable sight gags, hilarious misunderstandings between everyone, and that classic stoic uh, stone face of his. And Keaton's dance choreography is seamless, and it all makes for pure entertainment an absolute classic. Now, there is only one sad moment in the joy of this film, uh, as seen from today's perspective. Sadly, uh, Hackface was used in entertainment for many years, and there is a moment in this film that features it. It's uncomfortable when you see it, but try to look at it from a historical standpoint in our nation's history and, and uh, a learning point uh, for everyone. So now, let's sit back and enjoy Neighbors, as if it was December 20th, 1920.
and uh, <laughs> there, I, uh, there, and there it is. So how about that? Uh, One hundred years ago. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing. Uh, and thank God they've got these saved. Uh, and the, you know, the miracle of having all these silent films saved because they they tell us a lot about our history and uh, society and and just pure entertainment and storytelling. So um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope that gives you a taste. If you don't know Buster Keaton, uh, you know, to uh, go on to any of your Netflix or Amazon Prime, put in Buster Keaton. They usually have one or two of his films and uh, uh, it's worth a look. Or certainly uh, watch uh, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum and to see that final performance, which was extremely memorable in itself, let alone his whole career. Um, so, Buster Keaton Day. Um, as we come to a close of Monadnock tonight, uh, what's coming up uh, uh, in November, the rest of November? Uh, as I already mentioned, you've got, you know, what the double features are uh, starting uh, next week on Wednesday, on Veterans Day, so uh, stay tuned for that. Later in the month, on November 19th, I've mentioned this before, we have uh, local cellist Andrew Katrubas will be performing from Russia. He is over in Russia right now, and so uh, we've got things, I hope, figured out. I think we do. Uh, and uh, so, uh, absolutely, uh, stay tuned for that. Put that on your calendars. That is November 19th, 19th with Andrew. Uh, other than that, I am so glad you were with us. And um, as always, if you'd like to sponsor the program, uh, if you're an organization or individuals to help underwrite uh, the programming you do at the park, uh, at uh, Monadnock tonight in Park TV, please contact us. Uh, and if you have a question, if you have an idea for a show, if you'd like to be on the show, uh, any of the above, uh, email us at parktv at the parktheater.org, or you can call us at 603-532-9300. And as we say at the end of our uh, programs every week, um, we ask everyone to be safe out there, be healthy, be kind, be hopeful, because we can do this. And, uh, and I hope that Buster Keaton brought a smile to your faces today and to your hearts because I think everybody needs a little bit of that. So again, uh, find, find some more Buster and keep smiling. And with that, we bid adieu. Again, I'm Steve Jackson, and hopefully we'll see you again next week, Thursday at 5 p.m. live. Always afterwards, you can archive our programs and share them with your friends either at parkyoutube.com or on our Facebook page if you're watching directly from there today. So until next week, uh, we say bye-bye and thanks for joining us.